What is it, boy? What is it? Find it. What is it? Well, she was. Find it. Oh. Get it then, boy. Get it then. <laughs> Can't get it. Chance. Chance. You really want that ball, don't you, buddy? Well, this is our most morning start here at the brewery, folks. Chance usually finds his ball and we have a bit of a kick about. That's my cardio for the day. Yeah! <laughs> He's better than I am. Look at him! What a nutter. Right, anyway, we'll leave you to it, Ronaldo. And uh, we'll come across here and show everybody the goings on. HLT, filling up with water. Why, you might ask. All will be revealed. All looks good on here. We're going to turn this on in a moment. And we're going to start heating up the water for the HLT. And we're just CIPing the big tank. Last cleaning process, then it's put to bed. Yes, check it out. A whole bucket of plums ready for putting in the freezer, really. And uh, also, we have Uncle Roy's natural plum essence. So that should give you a clue on what today's video is all about. Or maybe the tile gave it away. Oh God, would you look at that, folks? Oh yes. Right, anyway, enough of a distraction. Can't wait to eat them. Uh, we're coming to brew a beer on the kit. We're gonna do the plum porter again because that is not on spec. And I'll show you why shortly. I just want to discuss one thing first. The probes didn't work. The adjustment hasn't worked. 87, it's reading there. 87, it's reading 88, it's reading there. But we had to adjust it by 13 degrees up. So obviously that wire trick hasn't worked for the K-type thermocouple. We'll see how the mash one fares up. But today I'm gonna to be making all temperature measurements with a thermometer and not the system. So yeah, not ideal, but it's a workaround until we figure out these probes. If needs be, we'll change these ones out for PT100s as well, if the mash tun one works. Oh, strange, I've just transferred back into the HLT though, and 80 degrees, 81. So the HLT is actually not far off. We'll just change that then slightly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, and uh, I think we'll knock it down a degree, and that should be closer to the actual. Still have to come back to this. I'd like it to be calibrated top end and bottom end. We've got seventy-eight, eighty. I've gone wrong way. Let's try that again, quickly on camera. Da, da, da. And we're going to go up to, you know what? Let's just take that point 0.6 off as well. Oh, come on. <laughs> and have it with nothing and just see what the actual probe on its own is reading. I know we're distracting from the brew day here, folks, but uh, 81, 80.7, pretty close to 81 if you ask me, 
and that one's 81.8 so different levels in the tank of course right let's get some grain out and get mashed in we've got enough water here i think Tell you why it looks fab in there. Wonderful. So I have changed a few things on this recipe from the last one. Uh, the main thing being the plums. We're removing the plums on this occasion and doing so strangely changed the colour of the beer on Beersmith and for some reason the plums as an ingredient and I just downloaded it from a Beersmith add-on uh, the plums gave 96 EBC in colour to the brew which meant of course that uh, the colour of the beer was thrown off massively and that's something you're going to see shortly when we get a sample out of the tank. So I've got rid of the plums and to compensate for the colour difference we've added some black malt. So I'm just going to get the temperature correct on here and then we'll have a little bit of a chat about it in a second. Right, let's do a bit of research with this beer. Make a bit of a diagnosis. There we go. So as you can see, that is not the colour of a porter. Oh, it smells good though, it smells really good. So this is sat at 1019 still. It tastes unfinished, and it, that's because it is. So one of the reasons why I think that is, is partly because new kit, of course, for setting it up. And secondly, uh, the mash temp's probably got away from us a little bit. And uh, we may have mashed a bit higher than we knew we were mashing because of the probes being out on the kit. So what I've decided to do is reduce the temperature by a degree and we really went for a full body last time because we anticipated putting the porter on top of the plums which we thought would thin the beer out so I'm still going to do that with this beer and we'll see where it decides to finish up at uh, but we're going to take a step back from V1 for a while and we're going to go ahead and uh, really get stuck into version 2 and on version 2, the alterations that I've made are, if I've got it here, yeah, the change from version 1, the colour was way too brown, so I've cut the Crystal 400 down, we're down to uh, 534 grams, and I've added 534 grams of black malt in its place, and it was the plum addition, like I said, which for some reason was adding, um, 95 EBC there we go so it doesn't say it because you're putting the plum into secondary but when you add it to the beer it does change the final colour of the image you know that comes up on Beersmith uh, I don't know why it's done that well I do know why because it says 95 EBC but I don't know why they've put that in there so obviously you can go ahead and make your own fruit profile on the uh, ingredient add-ons if you like to but I've just cut the fruit out of this one completely. So, uh, yeah, the final gravity is too high. As we said, 1019. I've written 1017 here, but it's 1019 on the tilt. So I'm going to drop the mash temp by degree. That should uh, give us a bit of a drier beer, considering that we're not going to be putting any fruit into this one. Hopefully, it'll finish at around 1012. That's what I'm looking to aim at. Uh, I've altered the ABV to 5.1% on this one and by removing the fruit we've removed the variable there so we should be able to achieve a uh, 
I think we had 5.6 on the last one so we should be able to achieve the correct gravity on the beer and I've decided to just add the plum extract for flavouring when it's finished so we're obviously mashing now we'll be sparging shortly we'll have a look what colour this beer comes out at as it runs into the boil kettle and hopefully this is going to be a bit closer to a porter than the last one uh, what was I going to say yeah the reason I didn't put any black malt in previously was because I didn't want the roasting oats that come across in black malt and roasted barley so uh, I tried to avoid that by using the crystal malts that high proportion of crystal malt is probably as, as well probably another reason why the final gravity on V1 is a little bit high so time will tell I'm going to clean up a fermenter in preparation for this beer and uh, we'll continue brewing God I feel really guilty I've just eaten a 135 gram bag of cheese and onion potatoes. Oh, greedy boy. Anyway, everything's going smoothly. Really nice to brew on now this kit is, second time around. As you can see we've got the sparge. Seems to be working really nicely. Just sprinkling on the top. We'll revisit this at some point, but it'll do for now. And then I've just put a downturn on this pipe here so it fills up nicely. We've got the sight glass there, you can see the colour of the beer, it's definitely porter now. And we're going to start recirculating in a moment in the boil kettle. We've got the element on, just one of them. We've got it on at 100%, I don't think we need them both on quite yet. And uh, yeah, it's pulling 2.7 kilowatts. It's all working pretty perfectly don't jinx myself I've got a quarter of a protoflock tablet protoflock, and 120 grams of 3.8 alpha acid goldings ready to go in we've moved the old plum porter onto another bucket it only needs cooling now it doesn't need heating anymore so we've taken the heat blanket off and then this brew bucket is full of peracetic acid ready to receive beer shortly we'll just get it sat on top of one of these spacers foam spacers and wrap it in the blanket and then we'll be ready to fill her up all we're waiting for is the boil folks all right we're getting the boil on folks i don't know if you guys tuned in for the plum porter brew day before but you may remember the double tip <laughs> yes emptying the mash tun into the bag it didn't quite go as planned one might say so I'm a sucker for punishment and all that so I thought I'd set myself up for another fall <laughs> yes indeed so this time I am prepared Take it steady folks, take it steady. But uh, I had so much love for the last failure, I thought I'd definitely share it this time round. Oh dear. Ah, oh, ah, ah. So much as if you could just do with it, staying in that position. But I know it's not going to. It's going to tip itself back up again. I just need something to hold the bag open. Here we go. I'm going to hurt that. Ladies and gentlemen, this time round, we have it perfectly balanced. Oh yes, and we can lock. We can lock it there, and there it comes. Just have to shepherd it in. Oh, beautiful. Well, sorry to disappoint everybody who was anticipating a huge failure again. 
once bitten twice shy, as they say. This time it was indeed a roaring success. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, oh, I'm dead happy with that one, mate. Dead happy with that. Let's just stand that up a sec. And it balanced well enough to hold itself. There we go. Bag of green. All I need to do now is rinse it out. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Transfer in the bag. We have a tank full of lovely porter. And while this hot filter worked, Unfortunately, these still don't. It's too fine, that's the problem. The mesh in there is too fine. And using it without the Y strainers, it's actually started to block up this plate chiller. So we've got a little bit of a quandary on our hands here. We're gonna have to figure out how we can strain before the plate chiller. Um, because that, the holes are too big. They must just be too big. Which seems odd. But it's blocked up this end a little bit. So it's been a slow runoff. Fortunately though, we managed to do it. I've also been across to the stout that we brewed last week. And uh, I got a bit of actively fermenting yeast out of the tank. Look at that bad boy. It's really going for it. So uh, we're going to chuck that in straight away. Also something that I found out, the boil off values on this one were way higher than I anticipated. 13 litres we've lost on in an hour's boil. That's a lot. Uh, which means we've overshot the gravity by five points. So we've got 1055. It's actually 10. Let me write it on here. It's actually 1.0 five four nine but yeah it's a little bit higher than the 1051 which i think we were shooting for but hey ho that's what the pilot kit is for uh yeah 1052 so we're about three gravity points over where we wanted to be um and i've taken a sample let's go down the brewery i'll show you that it's much closer to the colour that we want. As you can see, that is a lovely looking porter colour, if you ask me. Much closer to where we needed to be. In here I've also got the plums, ready to be chopped up and put in the freezer for the original version. I'm not gonna be continuing the plums in the second one. I already know it's not gonna work, but I'm just doing this for the sake of the video, so we'll take half of the batch and we'll sit it on the plums for a week and mainly I want to see if in fact the gravity will change and the beer will ferment out more than it is already because like I say it's stuck at 1018 1019 at the minute so yeah there's quite a lot there to take in but uh, apart from me pitching some yeast and setting up the heating jacket that's it from Harrison's Brewery folks so uh, well, well I guess we'll see ya We'll see you on the next one. All I've got to do now is clean up all that gunk.